Hi, you teacher friends. Today we're going to talk about parsnips. No, not the food. This is an acronym uh, that stands for politics, alcohol, religion, sex, narcotics, isms such as communism, atheism, and pork. Yeah. Um, parsnips is an acronym that it that represents the topics that we shouldn't talk about as ESL teachers, or at least according to certain ESL teachers. First of all, I'm going to talk about um, why, how you could talk about these with your students, why it's relevant to italki teachers and any online teachers who lead one-on-one -on -one classes. Um, I'm going to talk about my experience uh, talking about these, uh, these topics and the ones that I have encountered, the ones that I haven't encountered. And also I'll discuss the importance of setting limits. So let's get started. First of all, um, teaching online, you're able to build rapport, you're, about, you're able to build rela relationships with students in a way that a lot of teachers can't do in a class. You are speaking to one person, one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes 60 minutes, sometimes two, three, four times a week. I mean, who else do I speak to five or 10 hours face-to-face, 100%? -face, probably a loved one, probably my family member, probably a good friend or a coworker, right? So after you build your rapport with students, it does get quite tempting to talk about different topics. Another thing is that, you know, um, this, you might be the gateway to the English speaking world uh, for your student. You might be the representation of everything they've seen in Hollywood movies and everything they've read in the news. And they want to uh, get your perspective on different points, right? And in the same way, you as a teacher could be tempted um, to uh, dive into these topics as well because after all, we're ESL teachers and a lot of us love learning about different cultures. We love exchanging with people from around the world. This is not the only way to do it. We could definitely do this in speaking about neutral topics. But um, after you're speaking so long, uh, sometimes we do kind of go into the uh, go into the no go territory, so to speak, and we discuss some taboo things. Right. Um, so I think the reason why parsnips exist in the first place is because we really don't need to talk about these things. There's no necessity to talk about these things. So if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of people have their own personality and well, everybody has their own personality and some people like talking about these things, right? Um, just like they're at when they're at a party or when they're out for coffee. And even though, um, teaching English is not the same thing. When you build rapport with a student and you get to a level of comfort, especially for your student, sometimes their, um, their uh, um, ideas, their unconscious ideas just kind of slip out and uh, we start discussing a whole range of things, right? So now let's talk about um, how, who wants to talk about the controversial issues and who doesn't. Um, so first of all, I think that the student and the teacher should be com completely comfortable in a class. Even though you're taking your students outside of their comfort zone, make sure that that is only linguistically and it is not um, hopefully emotionally. <laughs> it's, it's hopefully not um, pushing, the, pushing the limits of what they're comfortable to talk about. Um, I think that talking about controversial issues, um, forming debates about anything um, could be a great linguistic exercise, right? So it's not personal. Um, it's just practicing the vocabulary that you have. Um, so, I mean, we could talk about should pineapples go on pizza, right? Like that, that could be a controversial issue. But of course, it wouldn't be as controversial as probably... Um, abortion or eugenics or some or the legalization of pot for for some people right um, so what we have here I think um, and I think one of the great things one of the blessings and curses of teaching online is motivation you have a lot of students especially adults who are motivated 
because they book that lesson themselves most of the time. They're paying their own money from their own paycheck. They are spending the whole week looking forward to this class. And some people just feel more motivated with the spice and the heat of talking about something that is contentious, about talking about something that is, uh, that is a little bit taboo, right? Um, so I think the first thing for me as a teacher, I make sure that I build rapport with my students first. So that means no hinting at controversial issues for the first few lessons. Then I look for cues. So I let my students make the first step. If we're talking about things and there I see like continuously trying to bring the conversation towards a certain paradigm, towards a certain um, um, angle of the discussion that might be a little bit controversial. If I see that pattern over three or four lessons, then I will go to number three, tip three for you, formally ask them. Are you comfortable chatting about this? And that's what one of my French teachers did with me. Actually, a few of them did, and I really appreciated it. They said, from listening to you, Ryan, it seems like you are interested in this topic. Would you like to talk about that next time? Yeah. And, uh, and this is probably the best way, the most open and respectful way that you could do it. Instead of just assuming that your students will be okay with talking about, uh, be it feminism or be it the, the death penalty and just diving into it. Right. Um, another thing is a uh, kind of understanding that if you make your bed you have to lie in it right so i'll tell you a story in a minute about how um this could this could kind of come back to bite you sometimes as well um okay so for me what do i talk about with my students well i could tell you that uh, politics is definitely a, a big topic and i think for a lot of students who want to emigrate this is going to be something that's on their minds all the time. Um, this could be something that's a little bit particular, a little bit um, unique for English teachers, in fact, because of course there are a lot of students that we have, or at least I have, who are not learning for hobbies. They're learning for, because they want to immigrate. They're learning for work, right? Um, for cultural immersion. So some of them as well. So for that reason, um, when they um, book classes, they have this real incentive to, um, it's, a, it's a politically driven incentive in a lot of ways. By contrast, when I'm learning on like Spanish, for example, that's a hobby. So for me, I might be more inclined to talk about just cultural differences and maybe, um, my the things I'm focusing on are probably a little bit lower stakes than the things that my English students are focusing on. So that could be a little bit of a difference right there. Um, but of course, as a student, as I told you, I have already I, I, I have also discussed the parsnips with my teachers. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely important um so for for politics i've definitely discussed that with my students alcohol of course um religion yeah i've touched on that with my students quite a bit sex not a lot not a lot and i'm completely fine with that um but i mean that could even go into dating if you talk about different dating habits and things like that i mean i've spoken about that with plenty of students especially when we talk about the family when we talk about millennials or different generations um, but at the same time i want to um i want to make a note here that i think it's um it's important to um, to make sure that you don't allow the conversation to go too far, and whereas you're pushing the conversation in this area. So if you're comfortable with talking about these things, that's fine. Um, but uh, you know, I think if that's the case, let your student make the first step and uh, kind of tread carefully. Um, okay, N is narcotics. I is isms. Yeah, we've chatted about that. And P is for pork. Yep. So um, these are 
topics that I've definitely spoken with all of my students about, they haven't been the integral focal point of my discussions. I think the best way to navigate these with your students is having a list of conversational questions. Another thing is to have an article. That way you're not um, making it about you. Um, and in this case, you could hurt, you could damage the rapport that you've built with your students. Instead, you're basing it on an article and what has been said. Um, I have some teachers who have been fantastic with distancing themselves from, from an argument and just kind of letting me speak and, and just letting me um, develop myself linguistically and express my thoughts in the given language. And that's what I try to do with my students. However, a lot of my students don't want me to be impartial and they want me <laughs> to, to, to like, they ask me straight out, what do you think about this? And I'm comfortable with talking about it. Um, and luckily that has not hurt my rapport with the majority of students. But when I first started, I made some mistakes, just like all of us will on italki, right? And I think that sometimes I, um, you know, when I first got on italki, this was so fresh and new. I realized all of these things. We, we talk about the family and then we talk about gender roles and we talk about feminism and we talk about all different sorts of things. Um, and that's how it does go. It does spiral. I wasn't ready to navigate these things. And this whole thing about if you make your, ba your bed, you lie in it. I remember I spoke to one of my students from China about politics a little bit. We had good conversation. She asked me a little bit what I thought about politics. And then COVID, the COVID outbreak happened. And there was a lot of uh, tension in the media and diplomatic tension. And again, I am her window to the Western world. So a lot of her rage was kind of unloaded on me. And we went from having these kinds of like, you know, really intellectual discussions to things getting real and uh, her really l losing it on me sometimes, right? Um, and at that point, I decided to take a step back and I, I tried to focus on more neutral topics, uncontentious topics. So I think that's a good thing to be able to do, um, to be prepared to kind of uh, lower the ante a little bit um, so as to, um, uh, step away be, because at the end of the day you don't want to get in a fight with your student um, if they want to debate that's completely fine but if it's not your style as a teacher um, and you just want to focus on their linguistic development then um, it's uh, I think it's your responsibility um, to have a backup plan in that situation um, we also need to know where to draw the line for example, I had a student who um, we chatted about politics. As I said, I, I haven't really talked to students about anything really like sexual. Uh, dating would be the closest to, to that. Um, but I remember I was talking to him about politics. Uh, I talked to him about a few of the different isms. We were fe feeling comfortable together. Um, and then one class, we were talking about Scotland. And out of nowhere he brought up Calvin Harris I guess because Calvin Harris is from Scotland and he told me that apparently a photo was leaked of Calvin Harris's uh, penis and I just tried to avoid it and I tried to put bring the conversation out um, elsewhere and then the next lesson he sent me a picture like he sent me the picture and I had to tell him like straight up um, you know, that's the line right there. Um, that's so inappropriate. You cannot send me that stuff. He, he was really uh, understanding of it. And I think he was a little bit embarrassed as well. Um, so, I mean, I don't blame myself for this um, because I think that there, that creating an environment of comfort and, and an env environment of trust does not necessarily uh, um, allow, you know, things like this to be sent. Um, but I think it's something for uh, teachers to be aware of, right? Um, that while you're exposing yourself to this different domain of 
topics. There, there could be different ideas that kind of pop up into your students' heads. And again, especially if they grow up in very conservative learning environments, they could get maybe a little bit ahead of themselves and you need to know when to tell to, to kind of cool it, yeah? So you need to check yourself and you have to check your students at the same time, I suppose. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna throw uh, the link for Parsnips down in the um, link below. Tell me what you think. What do you think about controversial topics? Should we be talking about them with students? If, if so, how should we do it? Um, is there any good way to do it? Um, is this necessary in any way? Um, have you had any bad situations uh, while doing this? I know I'm not the only um, italki teacher who's been, who's probably run into some of these. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button or uh, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And I'll see you next time. Keep smiling.